So uh, this evening, um, I am chatting to Tristan Gemmel, um, who's a British screen and stage actor, uh, best known for his roles in Holby City, Coronation Street. Ca casualty. Um, and ca oh, was it Casualty? Not Casualty, not, not Holby City. The same oh, same so, hospital, sorry. different department. Okay, sorry, wrong department. <laughs> <laughs> and many other, uh, playing many other leading roles as well as in the West End musical, um, The Bodyguard. Um, thanks, Tristan, for sparing the time tonight for a chat. Uh, it's my pleasure. Um, it's really kind. Um, what do you enjoy more, TV or plays? Um, well, I get, I get asked this quite a lot, especially by younger actors. Uh, I, I, to me, it's all about the part. Um, if you're playing a good part, then there's nothing better than doing it every night in a theatre when you can just go on that journey over and over again and, and you know what you're doing and you know the audiences hopefully like it. Uh, likewise, if you're playing a great part on television, yes, you only get to do it once, but it can you know lead to great things or or you feel like you're part of a brilliant show or, or, or whatever. If you're not playing a good part, it can drag, especially in the theatre. Yeah, so it, I I don't. They, I mean, they're slightly different disciplines, but they're sort of. I don't think they're as different as some people m make out. Um, there are different muscles really you operate in the theatre than than you do when you're doing screen acting. But um, for the most part, if you're playing a if you're playing a, a character that interests you and engages you and is fun to play, then uh, to me it doesn't matter where you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you, God, learning those lines, that fills me with dread. I remember at school trying to learn my lines. Do you have a certain method? Well, it's just, or... uh, it's just again, talking about uh, it's a muscle mm. that you develop. I mean, there'll be things that you do in your everyday life or your working life or, you know, that, that you've done for X number of years that I wouldn't have a clue about doing because I've haven't done it over and over it's, it's anything you do over and over you you develop a facility for um so especially if you're doing uh, episodic tv which I've done quite a lot of yeah. uh, so there's lots of line learning the night before for me it was always the night before some people do it the weekend for the week ahead um but I find it easy to retain for 24 hours and then I've got luckily I've got a brain that where I can retain things short term, then it just drops out the back about a day later. Wasn't so good for my um, school and university career, but <laughs> uh, it comes in quite handy in acting. Yes, very handy. Um, and uh, Tristan, you once um, auditioned uh, to become the next James Bond. Um, well, what, what did that audition involve? Yeah. Okay, I full disclosure, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't an audition, but I did meet the. The casting director. Okay. Um, so it was like a pre-audition. Mm. The audition stage, I I never made it to, but I don't I don't know how many people did. But it was it was quite. It's just funny. I I I, I met her, mm. and between uh, so I went and sat down in her office, and yeah. between us on the desk, so that I could literally only see sort of the top half top of her of the, head. Yeah. Were, were piled dvds of all the you know the prospective candidates so there were you know there were ewan mcgregor dvds obviously daniel craig yeah uh, hugh jackman jude law you know you name it any any british oh actor of the, of the 90s and noughties yes far better known and more experienced than me uh was that very off-putting <laughs> so she was clearly working her way through all of that stuff and i i kind of almost said Look, I done a, a you know a, a couple. I done, it was before I done Casualty. I wasn't known for anything. I done a few TV parts, but n n not many. I done a Poirot and a, a big series up a series up north, mm. uh, but nothing you know. And I sort of felt like saying, "Is, you, is it? Is there really any point? Any are you point? just the, the ten minutes of both of our lives that we are now going to spend?" sort of vaguely talking about this upcoming project is it is it really 10 minutes that's going to be good for either of us? <laughs> but I didn't um but obviously I didn't I didn't wow her either with my charm and wit and never got to the audition stage 
Oh, uh, well, I can't remember with Bond because he died, didn't he? In the last one. Is that right? In uh, the one we've just had. A Time to Die. I have to confess, I have not seen not the last it. one. I, I, I got a bit, I did get a bit of Bond fatigue at some point. Maybe it's, it's just, good. It is good. Maybe it's just bitterness at, at not well, having might be. <laughs> not having taken the casting process further than I did. Maybe it's well. Just... I think you should try again. I think I've seen all the others. Very good no, bond. Very no, good. I think bless <laughs> you, Panda. But I think that ship has sailed. Well, you just don't know. Um, so, uh, if, if anything, if they if they're going to reboot it, I would. My guess is that they would reboot it like young Bond, like mm, much, maybe much younger bond now yeah um, yeah possibly although um, i am the same age as roger moore when he did uh view to a kill i think that was that's the oldest ever bond um, well, you're definitely i don't think you're too old to do it at all i'm not too old to do my roger moore no <laughs> but i suppose i could stay for just one more glass of champagne <laughs> oh my god there um, you've appeared in several uh, TV series, um, obviously Casualty being one of them, London's Burning, The Bill, if I got this right. I've done um, Bill, yeah. Uh, I've... In, ca in Casualty, did you sort of learn anything about medicine, you know, along the way? And likewise, actually, the fire service and the police, did you find um, some learnt stuff? You just learnt... No, I mean, nothing. To, uh, in Casualty, you did learn some very, very basic things of um, uh, emergency medicine, like the airways, ABC, airways, breathing and circulation. That's the okay. main thing. Yeah. Remember. Okay. So, so when somebody comes in, those are the first things you check, um, basically to make sure they are alive and are going to stay alive for the next few seconds or minutes. Yes. Uh, beyond that, it all got a bit complicated. Um, but we always had on-set medics and doctors to ex to explain what was going on yes. to us. So if there was some complicated procedure that you had to mm. talk about using long-worded medical dialogue that you hadn't a clue about, yeah, um, the the on-set doctors would would tell you what that procedure was. Okay, see. So, so, the, so you had a picture of it in your mind, which I found helped greatly because it it it. For some reason, it made it easier to learn the lines if I'm I knew, sure. and if I knew the story I was telling with it. Yes, with those lines, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. No, and in terms of police and uh, fire service, no, no not okay. not. I mean, you learn you learn some basic things, um, but not, not not that would allow me to now put on a uniform and do anything <laughs> as a figure of authority. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you played um, Robert Preston. In Corrie, um, from 2015 to 2019, did you in, enjoy your time? I loved uh, it. On Coronation Street. Uh, uh, it, it was a, a very wonderful thing to be part of. And it's, you know, obviously it's a British institution. Um, been around for 63 years now, I think. Wow. Um, and um, Bill Roach has been in it from the beginning, Ken Barlow. Yes, so, of course. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I did feel a little bit of a sort of southern imposter because uh, I was the only one that was there putting on an accent, really. Yeah. Uh, very good else, accent, by the way. From there, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I did, I did feel that. I always felt that my the clock was ticking a little, a little <laughs> bit. Um. So yeah, but I had a great time. The people were lovely, you know. So. so Sometimes your character would be less involved than other times. No, that's that's not a moan. That's just that's just what happens when you've got a cast of, I think there was something like 60, 60 odd regulars. So there were times when you were busy and doing brilliant stuff, and there were times when you weren't. But that was great because it meant I could spend more time with the family. So, you know, it, it, it was uh it was a great a great experience and a and a brilliant way to learn about TV just because of the sheer volume of of work you have to do. Yeah, I'm sure. So, so what can you sort of describe a typical day? You know, well, when busy, you're on set and you've got an actor. You know, you're yeah. If a, a busy on. day, yeah. a busy day, you might mm -hmm. have seven or eight scenes. Yeah. Um, I think the most I ever had was thirty-two pages of dialogue, which is uh, 
yeah, that was probably about six, seven, eight scenes, three, four pages a scene. Um, so that really, you have to be pretty sharp to get, and that's from 8, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So you've basically got a, an hour, maybe an hour and a half per scene. You've got to do your bits, the uh, other person's bits, and a, a wide shot. But you're, you're filming multiple cameras, so sometimes you can do two or three of those things at the same time. Um wow. How do you so, remember all that? Yeah, you just you, again, you 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 just learn it. I I always learned it the the night before. Some of the cast don't even do that. There was one cast member whose name I won't tell you, but oh. um, she forgot her script one day, oh. and I, I had quite a lot of words with her, uh, and she'd been sent the wrong script or something, and she'd read the wrong episode or something. I can't quite remember, but. She came on set and we had a three page scene and she didn't know her, her lines and you don't really get rehearsal time there. You re, you go through it once and then you put the cameras on it and you maybe rehearse it on the camera. And then the third time you do it, you're doing it. And uh, she said, oh, can I just have a look at your script? I've left my script. Can I can I have a look at yours? And so I handed it over and she looked at this three page script. Oh, my God. Three page scene. She went, hmm, OK, she put it down and then did the scene word were perfect so she ah. she's basically got a photographic memory so that mm. and that's because she's been in the show quite a quite a while so she, you know that's again that's a facility you develop yeah. so. wow wow um and um you, you know all these different roles that you've you've uh done uh, there are lots of different accents and obviously you had to do the accent for um coronation street how, do you find those difficult to perfect do you get tuition for that uh you can do i didn't for cory um but some jobs uh you know you have dialogue coaches when you're do, say doing american uh accents in in uh. big tv things or, or or films um again it's quite it's quite easy to get the ballpark of the accent sort of yeah close but it the, for me the challenge is to is to then actually perfect it from from there because a lot, a lot of people do pretty good approximate accents mm. and uh the the challenge is to just do that last bit to make it fully believable and yeah. i quite i quite enjoy that process and, and you know and i'm not always perfect i've had varying degrees of success with it but i love the the challenge of of mm. doing that. um like i'm doing a theater piece at the moment um at the at the theatre royal in Windsor, I'm playing an American character in a play called The Grass Is Greener, and uh, I'm really having to work quite hard, and I'm um relishing that because it's yeah. it's it you know everyone can do what, a sort, sort of American approximate accent? American accent. But, can you practice but... it now on us. No, no, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Come and see the show. Yeah, tell you. Tell your your loyal uh, listeners and readers to to come and see the show. March. Well, I don't know. It depends when this goes out. I don't know when this is going out. But March. It'll, go, it'll go out on the twelfth of March. Okay. Well, then they've got one more. You got one more week to book. Okay. Them. March the eighteenth finishes at the Theatre Royal Windsor. So if you're in the Onda runs, um, grab a ticket and come and see us. Brilliant. Tom, Janie D, and um, yours truly. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and uh, so talking about sort of plays and, and, and musicals, you were leading role um, in the West End musical Bodyguard alongside Beverly Knight, which I loved, by the way. Oh, thank loved you. Um, was that utterly exhausting? Uh, it, it, it was more exhausting for the women and for Beverly and yeah. Alexandra who took over from her because they had to sing 14 songs a night. Mm. I you know what I had a, a apart from the fact that it was in London and I was away from the family quite a lot um that was a dream job really uh, I to you get to play the the title character in a musical and you don't have to sing that's yeah, a result, result. That's a result for me. well he, do, he does sing he sings a karaoke song and but it which he sort of sings badly so you could uh, well, so that's sort you, of, could, yeah. you, you could butcher it and that yeah. would be that's part of the show although some yeah. nights I tried to sing it properly and some nights I deliberately butchered it but um so I, I had the best seat in the house for 
you know, the amazing Beverly Knight and the amazing Alexandra Burke. So um, it, it, I, I, I got no complaints about my workload in, in that job. It was, it was a, a dream, really. It was a, a really fun year and, and lovely company. I had a great time. What was that? Um, did you have did you ever have two performances a day or is it? Yeah, well, uh, I think Wednesdays, Wednesdays, and, Wednesdays and Saturdays we had two a day. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So uh, often the. Um, the understudy would go on for the Wednesday matinee and the Saturday matinee so that Beverly wouldn't be singing 28 songs yeah. in a day, because even yeah. even for her, who has an amazingly robust voice. Um, yeah, it take its toll. Yeah, that would be that would be quite a lot, and and also you need to bring other other people along, and uh, mm-hmm. you know the, the un- and the understudy it was a great uh, it was an attractive job for the understudies because they knew that they would get on twice a week, which is yes. brilliant. So they could get people in, and um, you know, and it it pushed their careers, and they were you know they were pretty blooming good as well. So yeah, wow. Um, and sort of given the choice, Tristan, what would you what what would your ideal assignment be? TV or play? Uh, well, that like I said before, that would depend on the part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. TV, right. film, or play. Um, it it would yes. it would depend on also where it is. I suppose now you know with with family and kids it's it's not the same as when you're in your 20s and like early yeah. 30s when you just do some fancy free it's sort of take these jobs and go go off to you know south africa or canada mm-hmm. or spain or you know a bunch of different places that that was all a lot of fun now you have to think you have to think twice about it a, a little bit um i've just done pantomime in um in billingham which is up near middlesbrough right which, uh, you know we live in you know near near yourself in Gloucestershire so uh that's quite a hike so yeah. I had to stay up there and the family had to come up for a week so you know panto is great fun but it does um it does uh, severely disrupt your Christmas yes no oh, god I'm I, sure I, but still you still you have to do it because it's um it's a great job to do yeah yeah um and um do you sort of you must get days where I don't know for whatever reason you're tired you're ill you don't have time with your lines I don't know but when you sort of fluff them uh, do you, and do you have to do retake after retake I mean have you ever had sort of really bad yeah, well, on, yeah yeah everybody has those days and uh Coronation Street just the sheer volume of work you can't you're never going to get everything right no. um but do people get fed up I mean do you get sort of people getting but, grumpy and sort of you mean actors or or directors? Well, the actors, all the all the all the sort of people filming and directors and yeah. whatever. Yeah, I mean the directors are on a they're on a pretty tight schedule. So uh, yeah. generally, you have to have a base level of competence mm. as an actor in those type of shows. If you don't, if you do keep messing up, I mean they'll do they'll do a take and they'll always pro- pretty much always do a second take. Some directors will go, no, I love that first take so much. Let's move on. Mm. But most time you'll do a second take and occasionally a third. If you need to go more than the third take, You're probably... then the metaphorical eyebrows start raising. Yeah, I'm sure. And I think probably actors who do that on a regular basis will find that their their characters don't last. No, they get the heave ho. <laughs> So, you know, if they, if you get a reputation for being a, a slow worker and you, you have to do these days of, of high volume scenes and then you and you're not going to get yeah. through it and scenes get dropped and they have to be put on the schedule for another day. And oh, you know, the scheduling yeah. is pretty tight because they're filming three or four different episodes all at the same time. So um if you get a reputation for being a, a you know slow or, or disruptive in that sort of way, yeah. you, you probably won't you probably won't last very long in the yeah. in the job. That's just the, the basic brutal yeah. truth of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and how much sort of, you know, when you sort of go up um and and would were, were doing Corrie going up north, what did you sort of end up doing lots of socializing? I mean, is there socializing when yeah. you're up yeah, there? Can it be quite fun or is it pretty it's a pretty sociable cast up there? Um more probably I would say with the younger cast members, but um 
it's it's a lovely setup. It's just across the bridge from um, you know, Salford Keys and yes. uh, Media City. And I, I had a flat up there where I went stayed Monday to Friday. So, you know, it's very easy to go for a drink after work and oh. walk two hundred yards back to your flat. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we did a fair we did a fair bit of that. Yeah. And, oh yeah, brilliant. A really good a really good bunch and I'm still in touch with them. Um, yeah. Quite a few of them, so. Yes. Oh good. Um and um do you have any particular roles or series that you would really like to feature in? Uh well That'd be difficult to answer, don't know. It, it it is, you know, everyone wanted to be in uh everyone wanted to be in um Game of Thrones, for example, yeah. and, and Downton Abbey because they were also because they were great shows but but also because they were big shows that were seen in america and mm. you know british actors that were in those shows could then have open doors um yeah which is just you know a logically good thing for your career mm. so those sort of crossover shows that that work on both sides of the atlantic there's big sort of netflix shows yes. they they they're good to get onto i personally I have never done, but would really, I'm a big sci-fi fan. So I would love right. to do a sci-fi series. Okay. Or like zombie series or something like oh that. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Horror film? <laughs> horror film, yeah. Well, I did it. Like Freddy uh, Krueger. I did a around. sort of horror film. It was more like, um, what do you call it? Uh, a gore, not gore, a gore fest. It was like a shoot 'em up film. Right. In, uh, set in a big country house in the, in the West of England which um, we filmed last year, which hopefully will come out quite soon. It's called An Enemy Within. An uh, Enemy Within. An Enemy Within. That 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 was a lot of fun. And uh, so, yeah. They, Look they, out for that. Quite, quite, quite bloody. So okay. uh, I, had a, I, I, had, I had a ball on that. But but yeah, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to do more more of that type of stuff. Yes. Um, and especially uh, sci-fi. Mm. Um, and... Going back to sort of a couple of years, COVID, that must have been very, very hard for all yeah. of you actors and actresses um, and that line of business. Um, you just left Corrie. Um, yes, I made the mistake of being killed off of Corrie in Christmas oh, 2019. Which, you. Um, if you had a crystal ball, you would have probably chosen not to not to do uh, if you had the choice but you know it is is, is what it yeah. is and then uh, yeah covid was pretty pretty grim for the acting business certainly theaters were closed for what a year more than a year in, yeah. in, in a lot of cases um and a lot of the smaller theaters really struggled to survive i think some of them didn't um mm -hmm. and what did you do what did you sort of do well, i mean i suppose during lockdown we we're all just at home anyway but uh yeah, I, but with between you know, homeschooling and just trying to get by, it, um, it's sort of yeah. I did I did a lot of weeping and probably a bit too much drinking. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> I uh, think we all probably did both. Well, it was, it, it's inter it's interesting how it affected people psychologically and how people are still not um fully back to, to no. how they were before even though they're you know ostensibly there are no um there are no barriers like we just find that there are far fewer so social occasions now I mean it's sort of happening but you know mm, we I know what you mean go to dinner quite regularly and that that it's, it's, start, it's just starting to pick up now but um mm. yeah that that sort of it, that insularity that it that it fostered has sort of Maybe we've all become a bit lazy now and just sort of, I don't know, we're used to being at home, not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe, and spending too much time online probably as well. Yeah, yeah, there's that as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I, hope, I hope the kids come through it. Okay, that's... I know. See the long-term effects on, uh, on children. It's been tough on them, actually, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah, um, no, COVID was grim for everybody. It was, I'm yeah. not claiming any special treatment for actors. Yeah, it decimated the acting industry quite quite a bit. Um, but then lots of lots of people had had a really terrible time with it. So, yeah. you know, thank God it's over, and you uh, know, just just blim and hope it doesn't come back. Back again? Yeah, no, exactly. Mm. Um, and Tristan, if you um, if you were didn't become an actor, 
or you didn't carry on being an actor, what would you have liked to have done? Or is, is there another sort of career path you, I don't know. No, I, 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 I'm I really lucky because I wanted to be an actor from the age of about, what I did a small part on a miniseries when I was 12 and it really- Oh, wow. It was like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. I was like, oh, wow, this is the world I want to be in. And I was very lucky that, that I could then do that. So um, I do count myself very lucky that I'm doing the thing that I wanted to do when I was 12 years old. And I remind myself of that fact when um, ever I'm a bit down about it and mm. whether when work is a bit thin or, you know, when you, you do, do that thing where you stupidly compare yourself to your peers, um, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, but but the you know to to still be doing the thing that you absolutely wanted to do when you're 12 years old is something that you can't put a, put a price on. So I did always. I mean, I, you know, when I was very young, I wanted to be an astronaut or a pilot or you know, like most like a lot yeah. of young young folks. I still love to be an astronaut. I'd still love to do. Um, maybe that's why I want to do a sci-fi. Thing. Uh, I think it might be. I never <laughs> lost. I never lost that space. Uh, yes. Fascination you know, with space and yeah, I'm a bit boring like that. Um, oh, I did my I, I I did celebrity mastermind and I did my uh my subject was the Apollo moon landings. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, and I bore my family around the dinner table to as soon as I reach for the orange and the and the uh, and the grapefruit and say, so if this is Mars, oh, this is Venus, or my children just get up and leave the table. Oh, God. Or I start moaning on about the scale of the solar system or the universe. <laughs> so funny. That is brilliant. Um, and um, Tristan, lastly, what when you're not working flat out, what do you like? What's the ideal thing you'd like to do to relax um, with Emily? Uh, I the thing I, I I play tennis. That's yeah. I'm, I'm a bit of a tennis buff, and I watch I watch a lot. I watch sport. I watch. Well, I watch my kids play sport, but also I like to, um, I go to Gloucester rugby uh, yeah. a, a fair bit, and uh, he, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a bit of a sport nut. So yeah. that's probably Very that. Good. Very good, thank you. That thank was you. Just so great. Um, really brilliant to hear everything, Tristan. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. No, not at all.